So for a little while now, I've had my Signal K set up talking to the NMEA 2000 network. And in my case, that's been displayed on a Raymarine Axiom. The display is not really important, but in this video, I'm going to show you some of the things that I've set up and how I've gone about it and some of the troubleshooting steps that I've gone through to actually get this all working. There are various hats out there that allow you to connect to the NMEA 2000 network from your Raspberry Pi. I'm using the MacArthur hat, which is in development um, and will be really shortly. However, there are other bought products out there, such as the ActorSense unit um, and other off the shelf ones that will connect your Raspberry Pi to the NMEA 2000 network. I would suggest that you go over to the Open Plotter website and have a look at the CAN bus documentation that they've put on there because there's some really good advice. So you're going to need the Signal K to NMEA 2000 plugin. And if you haven't got that, make sure you're logged in and go to the App Store to download it. Once that's enabled, there's a lot of information here that you can start sending out on the NMEA 2000 network. And for me, I wanted to concentrate on my batteries. Um, as you can see here, I've had to give those a name and we'll come on to that in just a second. And the other thing that I wanted to pass across was the engine information, because as you know, with the uh, NMEA 2000 network, there's a lot more of these sort of fields or tags that you can send this data across from one device to another. That wasn't present before on my CTOR network, and it's taken me a little while to actually figure some of this stuff out, um, but we'll show you what we've done so far. So I'm using a Victron Smart Shunt and I'm using the plugin in Signal K to get that data from the shunt into Signal K. I wasn't sure what to put in these fields at first, but it's really simple. You just need to put in whatever the battery ID is called. So if your battery ID is house and starter like mine is, you simply need to put that word house or starter in those two fields. If you've got more than one battery, you can just click add and add the additional battery in but its name needs to be unique. It took me some time to actually work out how that worked and I'll show you the steps I went through now. So if you head over to the GitHub website for the Signal K to NMEA 2000 plugin and you click on the conversions folder, you can see all the different conversions and how it's set up here. So we click on batteries and let's have a little look at the code. So if you scroll down a little bit, this is the code that it's using and how it's working out. And as you can see here, it's looking for electrical batteries and then it's looking for an actual name or a field in that part there. And that's the bit that you've typed into the plugin. So that is the house or the starter name in the plugin. So now I went over to the display and I used the NMEA devices and messages on the Raymarine so I could actually see the messages coming across. So here I'm just finding the CAN bus and you can see now I'm getting DC detailed status. It doesn't actually show me any data in these fields on this screen. However, the data is now available to the display. Then it's a case of just either adding the value to a dashboard um, and renaming it. As you can see here, they're called SK battery one and two. I've actually changed that now to house and starter. So if you've been following for a while, you'll know I've digitized my engine data. And in that code, I basically called them whatever I wanted because it didn't really matter. However, for the plugin to work, you need some consistency. So what I've done here again is I've gone through and I've renamed things where it was called main to engine. And then I've put those parameters in the plugin. So if we head back over to GitHub this time and we look at the engine parameters, here you can see the kind of things and the fields that it's going to send across. So you've got all the different ones there from temperature to fuel rate and everything else. There's a separate one for um, exhaust temperature, and unfortunately my Axiom doesn't display this field. So um, I can't actually display that information just yet, but it picks it up in the same way. So it's looking for propulsion, that field, and then whatever the actual key is, so exhaust temperature. So the code at the bottom here is working in exactly the same way. It's looking for propulsion, and then that signal KID, and then the key. And here are the keys that it's going to pull in. You can see it just at the top there, there's a PGN value. So the PGN value is what the actual display will be reading. Now, depending on the display, will depend on what it can actually show you in terms of data output. As I say, for me, the Axiom cannot display exhaust temperature at this time. So for a little while now, I've had a predicted fuel consumption value at the bottom of my screens. That's basically coming from the engine's RPM and a graph that I found showing the fuel usage per RPM level of the engine. I believe those values are taken at quite a high engine load value, so it is probably over predicting, but it's still a useful figure. What I can do now is that I can share that information with the Axiom because the Axiom has a fuel manager. 
And yeah, you've guessed it, it's in a different format than what I originally set up. And so freeze, I just put liters per hour because that was something that I could read very easily. Um, however, the Axiom uses cubic meters per second as a flow rate. So what I had to do here was I had to take that term curve that uh, I'd created in the code, copy that out and then convert each line of that from liters um, into cubic meters per second. And updated the code on the chip and then went over to KIP and converted that back to liters per hour so that I could read it. I then added the field to the Axiom and as you can see in the bottom left hand side, this is also showing fuel flow rate and it's also showing it in liters per hour. And finally, this is the actual fuel manager and as you can see here that it's estimated that we've used 0.1 of a liter in this little test. So what it'll do now is it'll start to calculate based on how full we tell it that the tanks are, that how much we've used and also give us some engine hour information which is also helpful. So just to end the video, I just want to show you how useful the server login is in Signal K. As you can see here, I've just turned on the enemy A2000 login and you can see all the output that's coming out and that's really helpful to try and troubleshoot and diagnose problems like this. Please do make sure that whatever device you're sending this to, it can understand those PGN values and then repeat the process on that display or device. So as you can see here, going to the, um, the data output and having a look at what is actually coming in on the other side. Because again, it's super helpful. Most devices have a diagnostic button like this and you click on that and you can see the fields coming in. So I hope that's been useful and I just want to confirm that my open plotter setup is going nowhere. I hope that you can start to see how this is all linking together now and the added value that it brings to, to newer and older networks. So what I'll do next is I'll update the code on the GitHub repository so that you can download it and I'll also mark out the changes that I've made. Essentially, I've consolidated the fields down to some standards so that I'm only transmitting things like engine instead of main and other things and I've changed the way that um, I'm passing that fuel information across. So if that's something that you want to take and download, please feel free to do that. We'll see you next time.